You could find out how to teach somebody to teach scuba diving. You could find out how to teach somebody to teach skiing. But in 500 years of the English college, there was nothing about how to teach somebody how to teach surgery. So we had to look around and find out, now where on earth can we get some information about how you teach a skill? And it came from the work of Simpson. And Simpson developed a hierarchy of training. And there it is. And you can see when he looked at this. This was all after the war, when there was a very big push for education. So Simpson started. And the first thing he said, the first thing he got to have was an awareness that a procedure is necessary. In other words, you needed to know that you needed to know something. How many of you watch sport and television and you say, come on, kick the ball, what's wrong with him? And then somebody says, right, you try it. And you went, ah, not quite what I thought. I became aware of a problem. It was a rep from here in Northern Ireland who said, would you like to see laparoscopic cholecystectomy? And I said, laparoscopic what? You put these holes in the stomach, you put these, these long things down and you burn. And we didn't have clips in those days, it was all um, end loops. And you had to learn certain techniques for doing this. But I thought, this is easy. But I didn't know exactly how. I didn't know where to place the, the forceps. I didn't know where to diathermy. You suddenly, the sister would turn to you and say, what size of uh, suture do you want? And you go, um... I'll have the one he has. <laughs> you had seen it being done, but you hadn't actually taken all the steps in. You had this wild overview, but you weren't skilled at the steps. So I know what's to be done, but I don't exactly know precisely how until I'm able to show it. So from Simpson's work on that, it then came to us that skills training is all about knowledge. It's not just about getting the fingers on and learning by trial and error. It's all about knowledge. And so the first thing you do is get the knowledge in before you let somebody touch your patient. Does that make sense? And what you end up with, if you take that, is a four-stage procedure for teaching skills. There it is. The first thing you do is you orientate the student in real time. You orientate them to what they have to do. That translates as do a professional demonstration. What you're doing there is giving them a thing. Have you ever tried to do one of those puzzles with jigsaws without the box? There's one at the moment of Heinz baked beans. It comes in a packet, a plastic packet, and it's 5,000 pieces. Now you look at it, it's all sort of pink, and it looks as if there's tomato sauce falling out of the bottom, and it just is. And they spill it out, and there you have all these pieces of a plate of beans. How difficult do you think that's now to be? Because you have no references. And when you have the picture, it's easier to do the puzzle. Now let me show you that in practice. Now I'm going to teach the time lot. I'll just do the four stages for you. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. So just watch what I do. All right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the first thing you need is the picture. The second time around is when you talk about the picture. Now we're all very good. I'll show you how to do this and you start talking. You don't do that. You show them what you expect them to do. Good performance. The second time you do it, you talk through it and say, this is what I'm doing and this is why. Ask me any questions. Because it's easy for me. I do it all the time. Ask me any questions that come to your mind. And I'll tell you what I do. Let me talk you through that now. The first stage and the very important stage is how you lift the rope. Keep it slightly short of that end. Okay. Okay. Because this end is sort of in the instrument. Mm -hmm. All right. So you grab it now. I want you to grab it with your thumb and your forefinger, your ring finger. Okay. Like that. Away from you. Okay. That means you've got what I call two working fingers. The rest of them are just grasping. Yeah. Two working fingers. 
The third stage then is they tell you, but you still do it. I'm still in control of the patient. I'm still doing the operation, but you tell me what I should be doing next. And you listen to make sure they get the chain of the operation correct. You grab it like this, so you, exactly. Yeah. And swing it around. Okay. These are your two what fingers? Working fingers. Yes. Okay. So you have the two working fingers, and now you take the longer end and uh, put it on top of the two working fingers. And only when they've got that do you say, okay, it's your turn to do it. But before you put your foot on that pedal, you tell me where you're going to cut. And now I slide. Uh, uh, catch it between the two, between those two. Okay. So like this. That's perfect. Catch like this. Okay. Catch it. Now I grip it. Yes. And I pull it through, and the right hand, the right hand goes up. Yeah. Okay. That's what keeps your patient safe. C one, do one, teach one is not in there anywhere.